Welcome to the Why on Earth Community Podcast. I'm Aaron Perry, your host, and today we're visiting with Shelby Kaminsky. Hey, Shelby. Hi. How's it going? <laughs> Wonderful. How are you? I'm great. Welcome. Shelby graduated from the University of Colorado Boulder in 2016 with a degree in environmental studies and geography. She also earned the internationally renowned permaculture design certificate during her studies. She is continuing her education with online courses about the soil food web, pesticide certifications with the USDA, and working closely with the community. Shelby also owns the company Edafic Solutions, and we're going to be talking a lot today about what Edafic does. And uh, the company was started in 2016 with a mission to help people reduce their chemical fertilizer use, grow soil to grow healthy plants, and store carbon into our soils. So, Shelby, it's so great to visit with you today. Yay! And I, I as you know, love soil and love microbes, and uh, I'm really excited that we get to chat a bit about a very practical thing you're doing for our community. Um, tell us, uh, maybe as a, as a way to jump right in, what's this word edaphic? Why are you using this word for your company? Yeah, so it definitely took a while to figure out good company name, but the word edaphic comes from edaphology, which is the soil science of how soil interacts with living organisms, so plants, humans, the microbes. And then pedology is this um, soil science of the minerals of the soil. So I kind of took that word edaphology, turned it into edaphic, and then solutions because it is compost tea is a liquid solution, and then also compost tea is a long-term soil health solution. So. <laughs> Excellent. So you're essentially um, in the greater front range territory of, of the Denver, Colorado region, including Fort Collins, Boulder and other outlying communities. You're essentially going around and spraying compost tea on the landscape. Is that right? Yeah. Landscapes, farms, gardens, lawns, house plants, really any plants. <laughs> Great. Okay. Outside. And, and we're going to a little later on, we're going to actually show you guys some of the equipment that, that Shelby has. It's really awesome. Um, and we thought this would be a really good podcast episode, not only uh, to share with our local community, because I figure a lot of folks in our Why on Earth Community Network are going to be interested in what Shelby's offering, but also in other geographic regions, this is a great example of a regenerative business model uh, that can be replicated in other places. And I know Shelby's happy to speak with folks if you're from another region and interested in uh, having her consult and help you get started. Um, so yeah, so we'll show you some of that hands-on stuff a little later on, um, a little teaser to look forward to that. And uh, I love, um, you, you right on your website, which is edaphicsolutions.com, you've got a definition of compost tea, and I'll just read it because it's, it's so right on and to the point. Uh, it's a highly concentrated liquid form of compost that is made by extracting and multiplying beneficial microbes in aerated water. The finished product is a living tea that functions as a fertilizer as well as a non-toxic pesticide, right? And we know a lot of folks in the agricultural world, uh, even uh, working on commercial landscapes and so on, have to suit up with hazmat suits because of the chemicals they're dealing with. You don't have to wear that, do you? No, not nothing. I get it like all over my skin and... Um, it's pretty safe for dogs, right? When I'm spraying, like sometimes people's dogs like run outside and yeah, no, it's so using it, it's calling it as a pesticide is a little like pushing it, but it does what you want a pesticide to do. Right. So. Yeah. And it's probably a combination of strengthening the plants, which we know is part of how to mm -hmm. deal with pest pressure anyhow. And then also, so what pesticides do is pretty much just kill all of the pests. And that also kills all the beneficial microbes. Um, so what compost tea does is I'm spraying beneficial microbes onto that area. And then those microbes kind of deal with each other. And then the, the pests are outcompeted by the beneficials. That makes sense. So yep. it's, it's like a probiotic um, sort of deal, like thinking about the same thing in your body, um, what we do in our bodies. So. Yeah. 
makes a lot of sense. I'm just making a quick note on yeah, that, yeah. actually. Um, and, you, and you just mentioned dogs, pets. You know, it astounds me, especially here in the United States, uh, so many of us have friends and, and family struggling with various cancers, and we even have uh, pets who end up suffering from cancers and other ailments. And, you know, it's like, by gosh, why is it so many of us haven't yet connected the dots? We're out there spraying chemicals like glyphosate all over our yards and then our kids are playing in the yards or the neighbor's kids the dogs the cats and we're wondering why the heck everyone's getting so sick i know and the same thing with the neonicotinoids with the bees the bees are pollinating those flowers that are treated with that pesticide and taking it back to their hive and um but with the the cancer and the dog thing is yeah so many people have in their, they usually live in HOAs, like a pattern where their HOA treats their like shared grass space and they treat it with pesticides. And you can see little um, yellow flags everywhere. And it has like a little picture of a little child and a dog with a huge like X through it. So saying it's not safe for children or pets to be around. Um, and so, but that also just makes you think like, okay, is it just not to be around during them spraying or like how long afterward? Um, so using those kinds of pesticides is really like a, just throwing something at a problem and hoping that it will fix it. Um, and it's just really short term where compost tea is a long term building up the soil to do its own thing. So you don't have to put anything on yourself, really. Yep, that makes a lot of sense. Just a little uh, hint and foreshadow, one of the projects and campaigns that the Y on Earth community is working on that we'll be deploying in the coming months is actually uh, specifically for uh, HOAs, folks living in HOAs, whether you own or rent, um, because we're seeing so much trouble with these chemical issues and other restrictions on people's ability to grow food and do permaculture and this kind of stuff. Uh, we think it's a really important issue and actually have begun reaching out to some uh, state level lawmakers to see what can cool. be done about this. So it's something that'll be coming and maybe we'll have an opportunity to collaborate on that yeah. as well in the Yeah, some future. states have banned pesticides mm -hmm. or counties, cities, right? It's like little here and there, but it's definitely not um, everywhere. Like, like there's pesticide spraying all over Boulder yeah. still like here, so. Just surprising. What strikes me as a bit nuts, and you know, I kind of understand where this has come from culturally, but it still strikes me as a bit nuts is that with our HOA fees, we're often spending so much money on these pesticides that are ultimately undermining our health and the health of our pets, our families. So it's, it really is a cycle that we can break and that needs to be broken. Yeah, and some people, um, yes, my company is like started four years ago, so I'm still kind of in like figuring out my pricing, but I'm pretty like comfortable with what it's at and people finding out how much it costs are just like, wow, really? because pesticides and chemicals, they just really upcharge. Like, and even the, if you look at the organic pesticides that they offer, they are so expensive that no like organic company is going to actually, or like pesticide company is going to buy the organic because they've been using, they already like paying for that. So they're not gonna change the whole business model just to go organic. Um, so compost tea is a super, super affordable way to um, rebuild the soil. I mean, the brewer was like an investment, but there's other ways other than my brewer yeah. that we can talk about um, to make tea. This is great. And we've got um, um, some resources for the folks who might be interested in the brewers for the commercial scale and then also resources for kind of do it yourself at home. But uh, speaking of pricing, Shelby, I want to be sure to mention that um, you're offering a 10% discount in this metro front range of Denver region uh, mention the podcast or mention why on earth when you reach out to Shelby and um, she'll give you a, a little discount for uh, being part of the why on earth community um, to get these good microorganisms into your yard and, and landscape. Yeah, so definitely. You, you also mentioned farms. What do you, how do you work with farms? Like what is that? So I started brewing at a farm. I got my brewer and before I went with like the idea of spraying people's landscapes, it was just feeding this vegetable farm um, and so vegetables are annual plants so they need a lot more inputs fertilizers um, so we would spray around like every two three weeks this farm and so I got tons of experience with my brewer with my sprayer 
um, and doing it on like a three acre scale. We would spray uh, like a whole tote of tea. So it was a lot of work, a lot of experience. And then we, from there, we decided to do landscaping, um, also offering that. But there's some farmers, 63rd Street Farm, I have sprayed for them. And then I also just make tea for them and drop it off and send it through their irrigation system. Um, but that's really, there's a, another smaller scale farm called Speedwell Farms that we just sprayed the other day. Um, so yeah, I love growing food. I also work with some farms, urban farms in Denver, oh, cool. um, Seeds of Power, Unity Farm, mm -hmm. and then Frontline Farming. I also spray their plots and they, those urban farms, right, they have little plots of land all over the city of Denver. So it's really cool going and spraying there. Um, and grow like uh, growing the food is a lot more rewarding or like more fun to watch than like growing some like people's landscapes. I mean, I love flowers, but watching the food grow and like me knowing that my tea is giving the food nutrients that then people eat is really really cool. It's so exciting. Well, you're performing a really important function not only in terms of the soil fertility, but you're also connected with all of these different community food production projects. And here we are in the time of COVID. You might notice we're sitting farther apart than I ordinarily would sit with a guest. And uh, we're doing a little social distancing. Um, but in this time of COVID, it's amazing to see uh, this resurgence in community and family scale gardening, similar to what we saw during the Second World War with the Victory Garden Movement. And I, I'm just, I'm, I'm so curious to hear from your perspective with all these folks you're connected with, does it seem like there's this burgeoning interest and in activity? So I, I just run my company by myself, so I can only do so much. And this year I'm already like at capacity that I was last year. So people are really into their gardens, into the yards, their lawn, whatever it is, because yes, they're home. And then also my roommate and I were talking this morning and there's a seed company called Botanical something it's local seed company and they sold out of all of their seeds in 2020 yeah we've heard this about several seeds yeah companies. so so that yeah. then translates to yes people planting gardens and people being really excited and then them hearing about compost tea and then calling me up and being like come out to my house yeah. so yes i and then also me just going to people's houses they haven't really been interacting with people yeah. um so me going there is like a little treat for them <laughs> like, uh, hey. yeah yeah hey and like yeah. talking about just the plants and all the work that they've been doing you know they just want to like show someone it's great that's really cool well um you heard it here folks uh shelby's really busy so if you want to take <laughs> advantage of this uh 10 percent discount you probably ought to get on it uh it sounds like because uh it sounds like a lot of folks are are reaching out to get the these goodies for their yards and uh landscapes you know, there's this whole other layer of benefit that those of us working in the sustainability and regenerative movement are highly aware of. And this is uh, carbon sequestration as it relates to soil. So what does your product and service do uh, in terms of carbon sequestration? So when soil is dead, right, doesn't have any living organisms in it, um, the carbon is not being stored or recycled. So the soil food web is like a huge web of microorganisms constantly recycling carbon. Um, and so car that, that carbon gets to a certain point where it's so decomposed that it can't be decomposed anymore and it's called humus. Um, and those are the huge soil, uh, not soil, carbon reservoirs in the soil, um, in the humus. And um, fungi is really important in that carbon sequestration and fungi is something that is not hard to um, encourage growth but it's something that I feel like it's been stigmatized people see a mushroom in their garden they're like get that out of here you know when actually we need those the fungi plays a critical critical role in the soil and carbon mm -hmm. sequestration so so my product yeah is just pretty much I'm feeding that web of microbes, or if there aren't any microbes, I'm spraying them and creating a community of microbes in the soil um, so that then they can get to work and just do what they do naturally, storing carbon, because that's the natural system. And what we're doing is constantly digging up the dirt to do agriculture or really anything, you know, construction, that completely um, 
disturbs all the microbes and the fungus that are storing that carbon and then it just gets released back into the air. So mm -hmm. keeping in the ground is not hard with the right regenerative practices. Yeah, this is, it's so important. And, uh, you know, one of the things I love to emphasize is this uh, foundational, fundamental importance of soil. And you mentioned the word humus. And our word human comes from the same root. That's cool. As, as do humor and humility, right? So the four yeah. kind of go together. And, you know, with respect to our climate, this amazing climate, we have a relatively stable uh, set of temperatures on this planet because there's carbon in the atmosphere. And prior to the Industrial Revolution, we had a two, about 280 parts per million. Now we have well over 400 parts per million because we burned so much fossil fuel and because we've been killing off so much soil through Releasing it. chemicals. And so this is by working with organics and by working with compost tea and working with you, we can actually turn our yards into uh, sequestration reservoirs for carbon to help mitigate the climate crisis that we're facing. Yeah, and there's soil everywhere, you know, like yep. it's, it's abundant. And also what's important in the sequestration I didn't really mention is plants they you know are absorbing our carbon dioxide and giving us oxygen so they are fundamental but without the microbes having a relationship with the plants they can't store the carbon so yeah, yeah. yes growing yes, plants yes. is a great way to store carbon too absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. i love the shelly um i gotta throw in too by the way i i, I can kind of geek out on this stuff a little bit that you mentioned some people don't like when they see a mushroom popping up in the yard and I get excited, and I'm sure you do too. It's such a thing to celebrate generally. And there's a particular species known as a garden giant um, that Paul Stamets speaks of that's a great decomposer of wood chips and other um, matter like that to help build soil. And a lot of times we can actually deliberately in, infuse or inoculate with certain species that are gonna further accelerate this soil building process, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll show you, um I have a product from Paul Stamets. It's the soluble mycorrhizal powder called MycoGrow. Oh, cool. And that's what I use in the oh, tea. Yeah. Um, and yeah, he's amazing. And yeah, there are tons of strains of mycelium that are um, beneficial for the soil. And here in Colorado, it's really important because the soil is so dry and fungus loves moisture. So there actually isn't a lot of fungal soils here, except when you go into like the forest, right? Um, so making fungal teas is something I've been really experimenting with, with people helping them suppress weeds and just grow better lawns um, because they don't have the fungus uh, in the soil, the mushrooms or the, and like the, it's really the spores that I'm spraying. And then um, it's not guaranteed. It's not like if I spray a mushroom's going to come up, right? It's not guaranteed, but um, the mycelium is something you can't see and what's actually doing tons of the work under the soil and then the mushroom is just like a little flower of that mm -hmm. so you can see it but um yeah i i've been making i make tons of fungal teas mm. what i recently talked to about with a landscaper who i was um just we were walking around a, pro a property that i was doing is that she thinks that people storing carbon in their landscapes is like the most important um not that storing carbon in the farms isn't, but there's actually a lot, there's tons of lawn and landscape for people mm. um, to just do carbon farming and compared to getting these like huge, large farms to do it, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, so, make and like sense. mobilizing the people and so, yeah. Shelby, you've shared a bunch of great resources for folks to dig into um, around these topics. And of course, one is your own website, edaphicsolutions.com and we'll have all this in the show notes uh, in terms of spelling and make it easy for you all. Um, another great resource is soilfoodweb.com and then there's compostteelab.com and greatereartorganics.com. I uh, want to be sure to mention too that uh, you're really active on social media and you can find Shelby on Instagram um, at, at edaphic solutions and Facebook is edaphic solutions. So hopefully you can find lots of uh, easy and good ways to connect with her uh, as we're all helping to uh, restore and regenerate soil together wherever we're located. So I, I want to ask you about 
the research side of this, and it kind of ties into a couple of these websites, what's the deal with the research in the soil microbes and how that's evolved over, over the last couple of decades and, and how that has kind of affected you in your career path? So um, I got first introduced to compost tea and really soil science in this way of like living organisms through my permaculture course. And this woman, Elaine Ingham, was brought up and she is the owner of Soil Food Web Inc. And she's pretty much devoted her life to not only um, figuring, identifying the microorganisms organisms in the soil, but doing it for people all over the world. Like you can send your test results of your compost tea or your soil to her lab and they will tell you um, about all the beneficial bacteria or non-beneficials, you know. And that's like a really important part of me making compost tea. And so she actually made my brewer with the man, um, his name is Bob Postuma, and he's with greatereartorganics.com. We'll see my brewer later. But he worked really closely with her to make sure that he was making the best possible brewer um, to actually extract living organisms because that's what is usually the hardest part is getting the microorganisms to um, separate from the compost particles, especially the fungi because they're like wrapped around the compost particles. So my brewer scientifically um, extracts the most life out of the compost than like any brewer on the market because of um, him working with Elaine. And then um, so Elaine Ingham has also a bunch of courses online that you can take and you can for compost tea, compost and the microscope courses. And so I haven't completed all of them, but I have done some of her courses. Um, and she's just a great resource. She has the compost tea brewing manual. And also what I found since, I've, since brewing in 2016 is that the research and experimentation is always changing with this, right? Like in the beginning of making tea, they thought that molasses was super beneficial. And then they're finding that, oh, maybe you don't need molasses. Um, and then she's the one who really put me on to making the fungal teas because bacteria is the easiest thing to extract. Like bacteria is found everywhere, but the fungi is actually what takes the effort to extract. So I always just reference to her and what she's doing because she's super active in it and it's always changing. Just like the science about our microbes in our body is be becoming like a new trend, right? People drinking kombucha is the same way microbes in the soil. For a while, they didn't think that plants interacted with the microbes as, in, as intensely or as importantly as they did. Um, and that really did change with the technology of microscopes and being able to replicate these organisms in a lab, because that's the hardest part, is um, getting these soil microbes to show up under a microscope. So some of them, like, you know, the, they, I don't know what the number is, but we haven't even identified, like, made a dent in the microorganisms that exist in the soil and even in water, too. That's like a whole other world. And then the other compost tea lab is more of like at home. Like if you want to brew at home, you have a small garden. He sells little kits and like five gallons or in a little bigger than that um, compared to my 250 gallons that you can just do it at home. And so he has tons of good resources and just really makes it easy for people because some people see my brewer and they're like, whoa, this is like kind of a big investment to do that, but if you just want to do it at home, it's definitely possible. And people have been making compost tea forever. It's not really a new thing It's really, at all. In, a, in a way, it's an indigenous and folk knowledge that's, yes. that's been around for a long, long time. And let it even just, people make teas just letting it sit there, right? Not even aerating it. So those are like different types of fermentation teas that you can make. Um, so yeah, the, the world is vast in microbes. You know, I, I love it. My sense is that the explosion in scientific understanding around the micro world, the microbiome, is perhaps as significant as the explosion around uh, telescopes and space in the yes. 16th and 17th centuries. Uh, it is absolutely amazing, and you're right. It's as much about our own health and well-being through our gut microbiome as it is through the soil microbiome. And I was, I was blown away to learn that in the soil microbiome, there are organisms, all of, all of which are too small to see with the naked eye. There are organisms a thousand times bigger than other organisms. So imagine you're in this world where there's creatures a thousand times as big as you, yes. right? And that's what's going on in any handful of living soil. And it's so easy for people 
to not think it's important or just even think about it at all because it's under our feet. You're not seeing it. Um, but I like to call it like a galaxy under yeah. under our feet, um, just like there is a galaxy in space. But I feel like there's a, there's a lot more living <laughs> under our, our feet than up in space. It, it reminds <laughs> me of a wonderful, one of my favorite quotes from Leonardo da Vinci. He said, uh, in the Renaissance over 500 years ago, we know more about the stars overhead than the soil underfoot. And uh, wow. maybe maybe now we're getting to a point where we'll kind of catch up a bit. Yeah, I think so. It, because of um, the benefits, the health benefits of not only in our bodies, like we we're talking about kombucha and you know sauerkraut and fermented foods, um, but then we're finding out, wow, our plants love this. Our soil loves this. So it's it is slowly but surely people are really waking up to that living everything around us is living right there's like microbes all over our bodies all the time and we're not separate from it at all yeah absolutely well i am i'm so excited about this and i i want to say that uh you know i get a bit passionate and, and feel a sense of urgency around this soil regeneration issue not only because of the climate crisis and the need for carbon sequestration but also because we have essentially been waging chemical warfare on our own bodies and on the planet for close to 100 years now. It's time to stop and we've got to do these different better practices, many of which go back to folk and indigenous life ways. And I think Shelby, what you're doing is, is an absolute gift to our mm. community. I hope a lot of folks in this region are gonna reach out to you and take advantage of this 10% discount you're offering, that's awesome. And I hope a lot of folks in farther away localities will reach out to you if they're thinking they might want to start a similar. Yeah, business. I do. I have had lots of people ask me on Facebook, Instagram, you know, how much you charge? I just send them like my website and because they're so inspired. They're like, yes, this would be a great business model. You know, that's I, I didn't just come up with this idea at all. Right. Like that's I met other people who were doing it and inspired me to start it in Boulder. Um, so that's just a way to do it is inspire people and empower them to do things yourself. I love it. It's a whole ecosystem of inspiration. Yes. And also what I was going to mention is the fertilizer. I've been writing a business plan for my business. And so I've been doing tons of fertilizer industry, uh, research. The fertilizer industry is a $19 billion industry. So that is really why we are like stay stuck in these chemical, um, uh, salt-based fertilizers is because it's a huge, huge industry that lots of people are tied to. So changing that is like really overwhelming, but I think I can get like a little sliver mm -hmm. of that in there, <laughs> get compost tea in that in there. So. Absolutely. Right. And it, we can do this as communities all over. And that's really important to understand the scale of, of what we're dealing with. Yes. Well, think, uh, speaking of ecosystems of inspiration, I want to give a quick shout out to all of the folks in our Why on Earth community who have joined our monthly giving program to help support our podcast series and the rest of our community mobilization work. Uh, a huge thanks to each of you. Um, if you'd like to check it out and if you want to join at certain levels, you'll even get uh, monthly shipments of the Wele Waters CBD infused aromatherapy soaking salts as a thank you. Uh, so you can check all that out at whyonearth.org. Um, also want to give a big shout out to our sponsors. And this includes Earth Coast Productions, the Lidge Family Foundation, Patagonia, Purium, Earth Water Press, and of course, Waylay Waters. Um, thanks to everybody. We're all in this together and uh, hopefully more and more of us are having fun incorporating these opportunities and transitions into our yards, our neighborhoods, and our lives. So I, I know we're, uh, we're going to show some hands-on uh, demonstration stuff, Shelby. Um, is there anything else you want to mention here before we go outside and take a look at your gear? I just want to say, say that soil is exciting. <laughs> like People get really excited about soil and plants, and I just hope that that keeps um, catching on. I feel like, especially during these times, like I said, people are more than ever are in the dirt and really like, oh, what's going on here? And educating people is like a huge part of my job and I love it so much and I want to do it forever. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thanks, Shelby. So we'll, we'll go outside now yeah. and we won't say goodbye yet. We'll do that out there. But cool. uh, come join us outside, everybody. 
walk us through what you're doing? Yeah, so I'm filling my tea bag, huge tea bag, with compost. So. So the most important thing about compost tea is getting really high quality compost. So, and also um, making sure, you know, if you are going to use your own compost, just making sure you compost it correctly because once I put it in there, I can um, start breeding pathogens if there's pathogens found in the compost. So um, I buy all plant-based compost from the guy who actually made my machine here. So it's like, it has all of the beneficial organisms I'm looking for to extract. Um, and I've actually been using this compost ever since I started brewing. So since 2016. So every single place I've sprayed has gotten some of this compost on it. So that's greater earth organics. So yes. Um, that's and also it's, um, you'll sometimes see some compost says T grade on it because it means that they filter it in a certain way. Um, so it's not all like sandy and silty. So the compost won't go through the bag. It's very, it, it's important to get really high quality compost, um, which actually is surprisingly sort of hard to find locally, finding a company that I can buy from. So that's why I source, outsource. So I'm almost done filling it. I need some more in here. And then we'll put it in the brewer. Yeah, does it? It looks like coffee grounds. Good compost, like it's super black and like spongy. Yeah. Um, but there's also other types of compost that I use too, like verma compost. So that's really high in bacteria. Yes. And so if I'm making a bacterial brew, I'll use that. But like I said, I'm really into making the fungal teas. So this is a fungal dominant compost also. Okay. So now we got all that in there. This is the most important part of the brewer. It's, um, the guy calls it, who made it, the microbe liberation chamber. So <laughs> you'll see when I put, like yes, right? So the microbes are liberated. You just gotta make sure you get this all the way down in there for, cause it will blow, this is gonna be pumping air into this bag. So, um, what will happen is I'll put this in the brewer, but what we'll, why he calls it the microbe liberation chamber is because air is being blown in here. And because this is a dome, it creates tons of bubbles in this and through the bubbles, um, it creates even more pressure for the uh, microorganisms to be released from the compost particles. And then they're suspended into the water. So. Thank you, Nikali. Okay, so once it's in there, then I start turning it on and it's just plug in sort of deal. And then I'll open this chamber for air to go through. And you'll see the water changing color once I do that because it'll actually be going through the compost. And then we'll add the other ingredients. How long do you let this run usually? So this will be a 24 hours. Oh, wow. But I also make extracts that can be made in four to six. I've been making way more of those for people. It's a cheaper, doesn't take as much time. I, it's just not adding sugar to it too. So, now. So it's like a yeah, see, right? It sounds like a little jacuzzi noise. So I told Bill, I was like, it's going to sound like a vacuum. 
Okay. So. So now I'm gonna add. Um, they're called microbial foods, and so that's what's gonna feed the microbes so that they can then multiply and reproduce. So the first thing I'm putting in is seaweed cream. So it's just soluble kelp. And kelp is really, really high in um, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. Also has like 60 trace minerals in it and vitamins and amino acids. So it's also just, tons of people just use kelp as a fertilizer. So adding it to the tea is great. So. My little measurements. And you just add that. And then the next thing is humic acid. So humic acid is like the uh, most like basic form of carbon. Um, so it helps the soil like structure um, sort of change in itself. Um, so it helps soil retain a lot more water um, and nutrients. And so we're going to fill this all the way up. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to add that to the tea. Okay. Yeah. It's really like. And yeah, after, after it'll brew for 24 hours, it will get really rich. Um, so the, the 24 hour tea is much different than the extract. Um, it will stick on leaf surfaces better. And so I'm gonna spray their trees tomorrow. And um, yeah, I like to make the 24 hour ones. And then last but not least, this is what I was talking about, the Paul Stamets. Um, it's called MicroGrow, it's soluble mycorrhizae. So that is a very beneficial fungi that's found in the soil. Um, he also has, there's like two types of in here, endo and ecto, mycorrhizae, beneficial bacteria, and other biological disease organisms. So this is a really nice little um, mix of mycorrhizae to put in the tea. And I know it's coming from a really good source. Paul Stamets is a really reputable mycologist. Um, and that's what I really care about is putting good ingredients in my tea. Um, just put a couple scoops of that. And that will help extract the fungi. And then also, um, it will do, these are just fungal spores that will be sprayed. So that's it. That's all that's going to go in this batch. But you can make tons of different types of compost teas. Um, that's just a really basic. This is the good stuff. Yeah, it's like, a, it's like a bacterial and fungal balanced tea. <laughs> Because all the ingredients that I put in, like the, they're foods for the microbes and the fungi like to eat some and the bacteria do. And, and you can see like the little bubbles in there is respiration happening. Yeah, we're gonna plant in here. Yeah, let me know. Should I keep going? So this is just like or you think that's good? Yeah? You think that's good? Uh, yeah. Everything that's happening. And, you know, Sawyer, by the way, quick shout out to Sawyer from Earth Coast Connections behind the camera for this special episode. Um, what do you think, Sawyer? Is this a good place to wrap up here? Yeah. yeah. So I just want to say, Shelby, thanks for joining us on the podcast. Yeah. Thank you for having Thank me and coming and us. seeing what I do. Thank Absolutely. you so much and getting the word out. Absolutely. It's so important. Super important. Everybody be sure to check out Edaphic Solutions. Yeah. And, uh, get your hands in the dirt. Get, get on with this microbiome party. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Bye. Wow, guys, that was great.